أن أكون معكم تأت الكساء وقال وعليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بدعتي قد أذنت لك فدخل تأت الكساء فلما اكتملنا جميعا تأت الكساء أخذ أبي رسول الله بطرف الكساء وأومها بيده اليمنى إلى السماء وقال اللهم إنا هو, هو, هو لا أهل بيت أهل بيتي وخاصتي وهمتي لهمهم لهمي ودمهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمهم ويهزمني ما يهزمهم أنا حرب لمن حاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم وحدو لمن عداهم ومحب لمن أحبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم وجعل صلواتك وبركاتك رحمتك وغفرانك وغفرانك وردوانك علي وعليهم وأجحب عنهم الردس وتهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد فقال فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان سماوات إني ما خلقت سماء مبنيا ولا أرضا مدحيا ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مديا ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا في مهبتي هؤلاء خمسة الذين هم تات الكساء فقال الله فقال الله أمين جبرائيل يا ربي ومن تات الكساء فقال عز وجل هم أهل بيت النبوة ومعدن الرسالة هم فاطمة وأبوها وبعدها وبنوها اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد فقال جبرائيل يا ربي أتأذن لي أن أهبت إلى الأرض ليكون معهم سادسا فقال الله نعم قد أذنت لك فهبت الأمين جبرائيل وقال, وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله يا رسول الله العلي الأعلى يقريق السلام ويقصه بالتهية والإكرام ويقول, ويقول لك وعزتي وجلالي إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا أرضا مدهية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مديا ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا ليجلكم ومحبتكم وقد أذنا لي أن أدخل معكم فهل تأذن لي يا رسول الله فقال رسول الله وعليك السلام يا أمين وفي الله إنه نعم قد أذن قد أذنت لك فدخل جبرائيل معنا تات الكساء فقال لي بي إن الله قد أوهى إليكم يقول إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرد أهل البيت ويتهركم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد فقال علي يا أبي يا رسول الله أخبرني ما لجلوسنا هذا تأت الكساء من الفضل عند الله فقال نبي والذي بعثني بالحق نبي فاستفاني بالرسالة النفجية ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومحبين إلا ونزلت عليهم, عليهم الرحمة 
وحفت بهم الملائكة واستغفرت لهم إلا أن يتفرقوا فقال علي إذا والله فزنا وبعد شيعتنا ورب الكعبة فقال نبي ثانيا يا علي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واستفاني بالرسالة النجية ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومحبينا وفيهم محموم إلا وفرس الله همه ولا مهموم إلا وكشف الله همه ولا طالب حاجة إلا وقضى الله حاجته فقال علي إذا والله فضنا وصعدنا وكذلك شيعتنا فهو وصعدوا في الدنيا والآخرة ورب الكعبة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل Please come in the front if you can, please. Outside, please come inside. मैं बंदा तू खुदा मज़नील और तू जलील मैं बंदा तू खुदा मज़नील और तू जलील ऐसा तेरे कशीर की वादत मेरी खली देखा सुबे वतन होना या वह है ना कफीर तेरे अजल सुनाता है आवाज़ अरही यार यार अब को ना खबर की वैशत से दीजियो बंदे से तू ना पुरसे से हामाल की दियो दूध दीजिए مقصود تھا جو تیرا وہ بیعت کہاں گئی نازان تھا جس پہ تو خلافت کہاں گئی نازان تھا جس پہ تو خلافت کہاں گئی ہے ناس ہے نصب شہر شہر میں پرچم حسین کا ہر ظلم کی شکرست ہے ماتم حسین کا بے شک سبحان اللہ واہ 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 اللہ صلی علیہ محمد سلام کے جب دیشہ عدم سے سر کو جھکاتے ہیں سو جان 
देखो कदम से सर को झुकाते सो जा देखो ये अहले बैत मोहम्मद देखो ये अहले बैत मोहम्मद जिसको बनाया है सारवा देखो ये शख्स जिसको बनाया है सारवा देखो ये कैसा जालत है मुसलमानो ये कैसा जालत गले में तो सौम बेड़िया गले में तो सौम बेड़िया देखो गले में तो बुलंद नारे सलवा 
سلام ہے پہلی دفعہ پڑھ رہا ہوں بہت ہی خوبصورت سلام ہے مولانا سید ماجد رضا عبدی صاحب کا لکھا ہوا اتنا رہ سب اکبار دیگر سلوار Sha 
नजरों को भी पहचान लियो ऐसी तलवार नहीं है डरी तलवार के ऐसी तलवार नहीं है डरी तलवार के Oh, man. 
کھول کے دفنا ہوں میں نکلے علما جو زبان پیاس سے باہر نکلے سامنے آنکھوں کے جانے علی اکبر نکلے آئے پر گلا مو سے نائے خالق اکبر نکلے شاملو دل جو بہن گھر سے تڑپ کر نکلے شاملو دل جو بہن گھر سے تڑپ کر نکلے ستائیں نہ ڈراؤں نہ سزا دو ان کو داغ پر داغ وہ دے بار میں دعا دو ان کو داغ پر داغ وہ دے بار میں دعا دو ان کو لوکے چلائی بین درد و بلا مانتے ہو ہر ہائے مر جاؤں گی کیوں اپنی خضا مانتے ہو ہر دیکھ کر چاند یہ اللہ حد کیا مانتے ہو کیوں نہیں بیا کی اکبر کے دعا مانتے ہو کیوں نہیں بیا کی اکبر کے دعا مانتے ہو پوری ہوتے ہوئے بانوں کی تمنا دے پر یا خدا اب میں جوان لال کا چہرہ دیکھو یا خدا یہ سخن سن کے تڑپنے لگی شہدائے حسین پیٹ کر سر کو کہا آئے اقی آئے حسین نہ ہو اور بہن رو نکو رہ جائے حسین پھر منگا لو وہی موزن میرے ماں جائے حسین
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين خالق السماوات والأرضين ثم الصلاة والسلام على عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وصفيه أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء ولعنة الدائم الأبدية على عداء مجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب الحكيم وقرآن المجيد وهو أصدق القائلين وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة محسنة صدق الله العلي العظيم الحمد لله and all praises to Allah سبحانه وتعالى that once again he has given us this opportunity to avail these divine days and nights and gain the knowledge reflect What is the criteria of that excellence? How a person can reach to that level? How a person can recognize that level? It is difficult to find for the people wandering around here and there, looking at times in one scripture As faith the greater world where we will be 
living forever. Khaliduna fiha abada. That they will be living over there. If someone really believes not only on the day of judgment but on the, in the life hereafter, only then his or her vision will be, become clear. One of the challenges which we are facing in these times because of the materialistic world and materialistic attraction which has been developed in this uh, advanced uh, form of marketing, of making it a consumer marketing and attracting us towards, most, uh, mostly towards the materialistic things. So, so we start feeling that this is the world where we have to live and enjoy our life otherwise if we couldn't enjoy in this life, we would not be able to enjoy another life. Yeah. Just let me ask ourselves, do you remember that you enjoy your past life before you came in this world? You don't remember. You don't know what happened over there and how you lived all those nine months. We don't remember what happened. Now why we don't remember, it has its own reasons, but we don't remember. Are we going to remember when we, have, we will be transferred from this world to hereafter? Or it will be the same way we spent nine months and we came in this world and we forgot what, what uh, happened in, in that world. Would it be the same way? We don't have any tradition, we don't have any uh, uh, prophecy or something like that to tell us what will, uh, if we remember or not. But one thing is for sure, when if, and hopefully yes, if we are able to enter into the paradise in that world, because of the magnificent existence of that paradise, we will forget, even if we remember, we will forget, or we will like to forget the way we lived in this world. Because it's so much attractive over there that we don't want to even remember our living in this world if we lived, or lived in this world for 50 years or 60 or 70, 80, 100, or maybe more than 100. We lived in this world. How we lived? It counts a lot how we lived. This is the impact of this brief living in this world will make its impact hereafter. That a very famous hadith which we have read and heard about it several times. There is a dunya mazra'atul akhira that this world is the cultivating ground, that whatever we will do in this world, its impact, rather the greater picture will be shown over there. If it's a good, a greater goodness, or a greater reward will be there. And if it's bad, something sinful, again, its impact will be great over there. That is the fire of hell would be waiting for those sinners in that world. So even a little bit which we do in this world, <clears throat> that even a bit of a peace, if we do good, we will see over there. And if someone performs some sin, Again, its impact will be there. So this brief life of few years, few years, usually you have this late few years. If we take out first 12, 14 years of our life, we don't know really what this world is. After the age of 15, 16, we, we start 
uh, understanding this materialistic world. And after a certain age of maybe 65, 70 or 75, we again, we become uh, uh, indifferent to this world at times. Because uh, all uh, the powers, we lose our powers, we lose Fifty years, sixty years, not more than that. This is the brief. And in this fifty years, what really we are doing? What really we are doing? some clarity he will or she will say if we will study in a nice university we will get a good degree and we can get a good job and the result of that job lost that objectivity even if you go to the, in the past those branded items but still we are not attracted because their marketing is very weak similarly unfortunately religion and faith is something which has sort of become unbranded and unappealing thing for us that's why we are not attracted towards us we as a speakers maybe as a as a, a, a people who write poetry, they have been asked to talk something which attracts our people. This is very unfortunate. Why? Because we have lost. Just giving a, an attractive title will not attract any person. It is the objective of life that what we really want to achieve. <clears throat> what really want to achieve. If someone is coming in this majlis to get and receive reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah they will get. You don't have any doubt. If someone would like to come and not only get the rewards but also in addition to know the, the lifestyle of our Imams, the teachings of Quran on Ahlul Bayt, the people and companions of Imam Hussein al -Islam, that how they lived their lives and how they died on this, why they gave away their lives and why they died in that uh, field of Karbala, then it's upper level. We have next level to understand and then again other level will also come, that is how to implement in our lives, with all these challenges which we face 
in this era. This is important. It's just not listening and praising the Fazail of Ahlul Bayt. Those Fazail of Ahlul Bayt are to be praised, no doubt about it, and it should be discussed. We should know that how our masters, our leaders were being. And, and why we should do it, Quran says, like a kana lakum fi Rasulullah uswatun hasana. It is because it is because the life of the Prophet is Uswa Hasana. But there are other things in Quran, other verses in Quran. It's not only to follow and find the footsteps of the Prophet. But Allah says in Surah Mumtana, in verse number four, Allah says, "Akanad lakum uswatun hasana fi Ibrahim." That indeed there was a uswa and uh, it was a uh, lifestyle uh, to follow of Hazrat Ibrahim Islam, and not only Ibrahim Islam, not only Ibrahim. Not because he was only he was the prophet, so we need to follow. No, waladina. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, and then he says, waladina ma'ahu, and there is an example in the life of his companions, those people who were being with Hazrat Ibrahim Salam. So it's not only the lifestyle of the prophets and infallibles, but also. The, those pure and sincere people who have been dedicated their lives to follow the footsteps of the righteous people and those righteous leaders. <laughs> again, in the same surah, again in the same surah, it's been said that him that for indeed for you is Uswa Hasana is an example in their lifestyle. For whom this is. Even in that, those people have example in the lifestyle of the Holy Prophet. Same thing over here. What is the result? For whom it will be a, it will be an example. Who would adopt it and who should adopt it? Those people who believe in life after death. If we have that vision of life after death, that there will be a day of accountability of good and bad deeds, that there will be a day that our life will be evaluated and we will be given uh, marks according to that, rewards according to that, and on that day will, it will be announced that with whom we are going and which side we are going, it's into hell or into paradise. It's with the companions of shaitan or with the companions of the prophet, the companions of the holy uh, uh, Holy Prophet, the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, or the companions of Aim alayhi salam, with whom we are given. On that day it will be announced. But to make sure if someone has the criteria, if, has, if, you have, if there is a university and you would like to get the admission in that university and the criteria is like 80 person, <coughs> we don't just study to get 80 percent only. We study and we strive and try to make as much as possible, like maybe 90%, more than 90%, so we, have, we make sure that we get admission into that. But when it comes to religion, when it's come to follow the tenets of Islam, the code of Islam, we try to be on the borderline. We try to always to be on the borderline. Regardless, it's offering of prayers, it's obligation towards our parents, it's obligation towards 
our friends, obligations towards neighbors, obligations towards states, obligations towards, uh, I don't know, maybe some charity, some poor people. We try to be give a limited one, a very limited something. I'm very sorry to say, I don't want to uh, belittle uh, your, uh, your, your, your like sacrifices and the things which we did, but we need to think about it. Let's go back, way back, how much? To the beginning of this world. The event of, the event of Habil and Qabil. Do you know who was Habil and Qabil? You know? Who was Habil and Qabil? Oh, so who, who was the, the, the good one? Prophet Adam. You know, the Habil or Qabil? Habib. 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 Okay. Okay. That's great. That's a size of Allah. Yes. Still we are the sons of Adam. And still we are being divided in Habib and Kabi. Oh. How come? How come? We all, we do. We do offer praise, we do, we do give charity, we do good, do good deeds. But our good deeds are like Habil or it's like Habil. Yes, we do give charity. Quran says, what Quran says in Surah Mulk? We need to see the difference between the, who does the good ones. Take it. Need to be, the, you, you will be tested and try to see that who performed a better way. Maybe last night I have also mentioned this thing. Just want to elaborate it. Now, when we perform, if we perform on the borderline, it is like Kabil. Kabil also be, become obedient and he also sacrificed, but he sacrificed the poorest thing, weakest thing, something which was almost nothing to do. But because there were the differences that whether he uh, gave away the wheat, if it was wheat, it was the almost the something which has been uh, used to be put into the drinks. But he gave away as a charity of it was being an uh, animal, uh, then it was the weakest one. But Kabil took out the healthiest animal to sacrifice. Why? He said, I want to sacrifice it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Habib, yes, Habib. He did the, the best one. So we also perform good deeds. But at times we are on the very borderline. <coughs> borderline. Like I was just mentioning the other day, that when it comes to... Uh, Ramazan and Fitra, people start, start asking, Wala, is it $10 or 11 or it's 12 You know, just for a dollar. My dear, even if it's $10, you can give it 15 20 it's once in a year. But still, we are become so stingy at times, although we give charity at the time, but when it comes to something like that, we say, no, we will stick to the $10, we don't want to give more. Okay, but then there are people who give like fifty dollars, maybe more. It's not that they can afford, and this person cannot afford. Is the vision we have, the way we need to perform that it will go to the charity, and it's not just to help those less fortunate people, but it will be saved for myself for hereafter. As Quran says that what you will be spending in this world, it will be finished. But what you will send towards Allah, it will be revealed with Allah and it will be multiplied. Now my request to the management from the last year, this uh, clock has not been changed, or the cell has not been changed. So last year also I complained about that, and it's been a year. So now, 
Musa Khan is looking towards me. Can I salvat Muhammad Wali? <laughs> This is very much important. This is very much important. So sometimes if I miss, don't just blame me. You can ask the management as well. Yes. So well, I am looking towards my watch, and uh, I'll be inshallah within 45-50 minutes time, not more than an hour. This is what the we need to learn. The Ibrahim alayhi salam. That how he is spent. Now one of the things which the same surah says. In the very uh, beginning of the surah, what is it? Surah says, "Ya ayyuha aladina amanu la tatakhidu aduvi aduvakum awliya." A very basic rule to understand that those people who have believe in me, Allah says, those who have believe in me, la tatakhidu aduvi. Don't take. My enemy as your friends, as your friends. No, my dear. We can have lots of uh, interpretations, but one which is very simple with the translation, we can we can do. We need to distinguish between the friends and enemy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We need to find out. Now, if we go through our lives. Let's go through it in few seconds for few seconds. <clears throat> How we are living? Can we segregate these two in our lives? What sort of acts are acceptable by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Acceptable, maybe not pleasing Him, but it's acceptable. And what are those acts which are displeasing Allah? What are those things? We need to differentiate, make something, uh, reflect on ourselves, and identify before we try to find out that how we should live. When we say Islam is a complete code of life, it has lots of ethic and moral moral uh, teachings. Yes, it is. But why, at times, we are able to? Um, uh, ride on that train, and sometimes he misses. It is because our objective or of life is not very clear. So when we find that there is an opportunity to ride on that train, and we will be benefited, we ride on that train. And when we see that no, the opportunity or benefit is some other side, we step down. We step down. Why we step down? Because we don't have the clear vision of our life, how to live in this world, and what will happen in this world will have its great impact in life after that. So the basic concept should be clear for ourselves: the concept of life, the greater life. There is this is not the only life, because when Allah creates something. It is its uh, blessing or fuzzle of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that Allah doesn't take it back. Allah has given us life; He is not going to take us back. <coughs> then what is death? That is just the transferring us from this level of world of this life to the next level. So death is not something to diminish us, to finish us, disappear us. No. We will just be transferred from this world to the next world. When, when we say "Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun," that indeed we are, we belongs to Him, and "Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun," and we will go back to Him. So it's just to going back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That is to next level, to the next level. It's not physically, but it is a next level as we were ninth month, and we, even before ninth month, we were in some place. Then we came in a place, a dark place, and then for the ninth month we were over there, second world, and then this was the third world, and again they will be the fourth world. So they are even in the cover is over there, and after that they will be the day of judgment and hell and paradise. So they are. So life is over there. Once Allah has created, it will be there. 
Now, how we spend our lives? It is, it is in Quran that there is an example in the life of the Holy Prophet. It is an example in the life of Hazrat Ibrahim as -Salam. It is, there are examples in the life of the followers of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. That is the companions of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. So it is not only the infallible prophets and imams that they are examples, but also their companions. And that's why we mention the examples and names of the companions of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Because because Imam Hussain salam, himself said, the companions which I have, not even my grandfather had these type of companions, nor my, uh, my father, nor my brothers, no one had, and no one will have except the 12th Imam. So this is the, this is what is important. The statement of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, which gives the elevated place to the companions, his companions, the companions of Karbala, and that's why we praise them, and we need to learn from them that how to live. In that few days of Karbala, the event of Karbala, there is a summarize and brief the entire code of life and teachings of Islam and Quran in that that we can learn each and everything from that event. This is the beauty and excellence of event of Karbala. Can I say Sabat Muhammad One of those things which we need to understand <clears throat> that who are the friends and what are their qualities? Friends of Allah, what are their qualities? Ibadur Rahman, this Quran says, those people who are the uh, servants of Allah, creations of Allah, obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Quran, if you go to the Surah Mu'minun, just its translation, it will tell you a lot. You don't have to go into the uh, interpretation and tafsir and in detail even if you go through the translation you will come to know that what are the qualities and then we need to compare ourselves at, at what level we are one of those things that they are they are very uh, uh, very punctual for their salat for their prayers they are punctual they do not ignore they take out their time they manage their time in a way so they can offer their praise on its first time. Yes, at times there could be a difficulties, but this is a quality that if we are concerned, that if we want to make a call at a certain time to our client or to our boss to report someone, <coughs> okay, so we make sure to put uh, alarm or something to remind us, a reminder are over there, to uh, make a call. <clears throat> Do we put a reminder for offering prayers? At times and at times not. And sometimes, even if they are reminders, we ignore it most of the times. Why? Because we are sitting with our family, we are watching a game, or maybe we are busy in our office or our workplace we will offer praise later on because there are relaxation we can do it yes we can do it but again we will come to that borderline again we will be in the category of qabil and not habil <laughs> and remember remember that both offered but allah did not uh, accept it from both of them they both offered sacrifice but allah did not accept it from both of them Allah accepted from Habil and not from Qabil. So it is the best of the actions and the character which Allah would like to see in, uh, inside us, in our personality, in our character. And that's how we will be able to reach to that excellence. In the beginning, I, I told you that everyone would like to be reached to the heights of excellence 
how to find that excellence. We need to go in lots of books and studies and there have been people who are searching for that excellence. They have, they, 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 uh, they change their religions, they, they accept from, go through the different transformations, but we take this belief and faith which has been, we can say by birth, we have received that from our parents, from our grandparents. We take it for granted. We don't even study about it and go through it. And the Quran and the lifestyle of Ahlul Bayt are the guidelines to reach that criteria of excellence. We leave these two, Thaqalayn, we leave these two, Quran and Ahlul Bayt, and we try to find and search on Google different things to find out how to reach excellence. My dear, at least what we have in our hands, first go through it. I don't discourage to people go and find out at times comparing things. It's also important to understand it in a better way. But what we have in our hands is a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his guys in the home of the Prophet and his infallible family members, at least we once we should go through the, their lifestyles and see that how they spend and how they have raised that place of excellence. When, when, we, when we say we would like to hear something, what we like to hear, we love it. We love that event, what that event is, that how Amir al-Mu'mineen that how Amir al muminin took away the door of Khaybar with his fingers. Was it a, just a physical thing or is something that, you know, it's now it's, it's gradually, uh, science is also trying to understand that a human being has the capability to enrich himself, herself from inside in a way that they can get that power from inside. Heavy, if we want to follow even this physical strength, have we tried something to reach there? It's just not to work out, doing exercise and participating in different things. That is also good, not bad. Not discouraging that. But besides that physical strength, the main strength was Kulli Iman. What are the, the Holy Prophet said? The Ali is a Kulli Iman. How come a physical strength becomes Kulli Iman? It's not only the physical strength. Physical strength was the result of the spiritual strength which gave him that strength in totality which the Prophet said that Ali is the Kulli Iman. This is important to understand, my dear. And this is, that's why I kept this title of these few days majalas, the spiritual and uh, our moral aspects from the event of Karbala to understand that how we can merge these two things to reach at some level of excellence in our lives. Inshallah, in the nights to come, we will discuss and elaborate it more and more. Even in the question answer session, which we will have after this, you can ask anything. It's not limited to anything political or something. You can ask anything. I don't say I will be able to reply everything. But whatever it would be possible for me, I will try to reply uh, those things. Can you Salvat Muhammad? And we see the heights of excellence. There are lots of examples of excellence. But one of the examples which we see, man, Imam Hussain was forced to leave Makkah towards Kufa. 
when he decided to leave Makkah without performing of Hajj. <coughs> and before that, Imam showed <coughs> to the Hujjaj who came there, he gave khutbah. And aware that, that what's happening in this Muslim world, he told that what happened and how uh, tyrant Yazid is. So it's not that the people who were in Mecca, they were not aware who is this person. They were aware that he was the, he is the uh, grandson of the Prophet. He announced what is going to happen, but those who judge the so-called pious people, they, they will be in their own shells the own thoughts that we will be within our shell. When there is a need to help the leader, Imam, grandson of the Prophet, they were engaged in their own self-grooming, self-polishing themselves. It's not like that. <coughs> it is the, this important to know where our efforts should be. When there is need to offer praise, it should be offered praise. But when it's need to give the Nusrat and to help and assistance to the Imam -e Haq, the leader, then we should be helping that person, strengthen that person so he can be firm and strong against enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that way, when they were towards Kufa, they were being stopped by Hur, stopped by Hazrat Hur in between when they reached over there. Hazrat Hur with his caravan, they were thirsty. They, want, they wanted water. Although they were being sent to stop Imam Hussain alayhi salam, for going towards Kufa and they <coughs> wanted to take him towards Karbala to somewhere else. But they were thirsty when Imam saw Hazrat mm -hmm. and his companion and his soldiers coming over there. He asked his companion to give water as much as they want to drink. <laughs> and after that, Imam said, if every soldier and companion of Hazrat Hur has have, uh, have drunk, then they should give it water to animals, their horses. After they were, they took their faces, their mouths from the water, Imam Hussein said, put water on the feet of those horses. Allah. Companion said to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that Imam, we have limited sources of, of these water, reserves of water. Imam was Imam, he's a leader. He saw that a person is crawling towards them. He, he is unable to, unable to, unable to stand up and come towards the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hussein alayhi salam went, went towards him and gave water. He couldn't able to take his hand up to drink water. Imam put his hand towards him, put water, and that person drank from that, that hand of Imam Hussain oh, This is the, this is, this is what our leaders were. With that tawazo, with that humility, with that uh, humanity, with that love and compassion in their hearts for the people, that how we, they should be treated, not with grudges, not with hatred, uh. it with love, the Imam attracted Hazrat Ihor. Not going through the entire event, but when they were being towards, uh. towards the unknown place, Imam Hussain alayhi salam on his way, slept and just 
came into uh, again and he was just start said inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihun hmm. Hazrat Ali Akbar was besides him and said what happened my dear father he said I saw holy prophet in my dreams and he said that Hussain very soon you will be coming to me Hussain you will be coming to me Hazrat Ali Akbar asked one thing oh Baba are we on the right path he said definitely indeed we are on the right path we are on the right path as Ali, Ali, Ali Akbar said just like his grandfather now if we are on the right path then it doesn't matter that we goes towards death or death comes towards us. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ye kafla aage chalta raha, ek jaga par pohcha, ke jaha par Imam Hussain ka ghoda aakar thair gaya. Allahu Akbar, Imam Hussain ne poocha, ke is jaga kya kya naam hai, is zameen ka kya naam hai, kisi ne is ka naam ghaziriya bataya, kisi ne is ka naam nasiriya bataya, Allahu Akbar, कहा किसी और को बुलाओ किसी बुजुर्ग को बुलाओ उससे पूछो इसका कोई नाम है इसका कोई नाम है एक बुजुर्ग आया उसने कहा कि मौला मौला इसको करबला भी कहते हैं इमाम फरमाते हैं आउद बिका मिन कर बिन वबला ए परवरदिगार मैं तुझसे पना चाहता हूं इस करब वबला से अल्लाह अकबर हा होना ये वो जगह है कि जहां हमारे खेमे लगेंगे ये वो जगह है कि जहां हमारे लाशें गिरेंगे अल्लाह अकबर ये वो जगह है कि जहां खेमों में आग लगेगी अरे मेरी बीवी शहजादी जनाब जैनब अपने भैया से पूछती है भैया इस बयाबान में क्यों ठहर गए हो इस बयाबान में क्यों ठहर गए हो अल्लाह अकबर अरे कहा मामे हुसैन ने फरमाया मेरी बहन जैनब अब यही जगह है उतरो यही खेमे लगाए जाएंगे यही खेमे लगाए जाएंगे यही वो मार गए हक वातिल होगा अल्लाह अकबर हाँ दो मुहर्रम का दिन था कि जब ये काफला इन बीवियों का काफला अल्लाह अकबर आले रसूल का काफला वहां पहुंचा है मुझे नहीं मालूम कि उन बीवियों का उन नन्नी नन्नी बच्चियों का क्या हाल था अल्लाह अकबर मेरे मौला ने मेरे मौला ने वहां खेमे लगाए मुझे याद आता है जियारत नाहिया के वो जुमले कि जिसमें मेरे मौला फरमाते मेरा सलाम मेरा सलाम हो करबला में मेरा सलाम हो करबला में बिखरे हुए लाशों पर मेरा सलाम है अरे प्यासे प्यासे हुकूम से अरे मेरा सलाम जलते हुए खेमों पे मेरा सलाम बेरदार मकरा भी Allah <laughs> Ya Allah, 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 ए परवरदिगारा हमारी इस गिरियाजारी और आजादारी को अपनी बारगाह में कबूल फरमा परवरदिगारा हमारे दिलों को हमारे वजूद को नूर कुरान नूर अहले बैत से मुनव्वर फरमा परवरदिगारा जो मुश्किलात में है परेशानियों में है परवरदिगार तमाम मुमिनिन मुमिनात को उन परेशानियों से दूर फरमा परवरदिगारा मजलूमिन आलम दुनिया में जहां कहीं भी हो कश्मीर यमन अफगानिस्तान 
नाइजेरिया है या कहीं भी दुनिया के किसी भी है हिंदुस्तान में हो पाकिस्तान में हो पर उन तमाम मिनीन वो मिनात की नुसरत फरमा उनकी जान माल इज्जत आबर नामोज की हिफाजत फरमा परवदगारा आजाद आ रही है इमाम हुसैन की हिफाजत फरमा परवदगारा परवदगारा अफवाज इस्लामी के नुसरत फरमा परवदगार तमाम आलाम मराज तकलीद तमाम खदमत गुजारान इस्लाम को सेहत और तंदरुस्ती के साथ तूल उम्रता फरमा परवदगार इस इनकलाब को इनकलाब इमाम जमाना से मुतसिल फरमा परवदगार मुंजिया आलम बशरियत कायम आल मोहम्मद इमाम जमाना के जहूर में ताजील फरमा और हम सबको उनके असार आवाम में सकर जाने वफा आलम जाने से
Oh, 